Hello and welcome to this YouTube tutorial on photogrammetry using reality capture, often just shortened to RC. Many of the ideas presented here will apply to other photogrammetry packages as well. We'll be going step by step using screenshots, animation and video to familiarize you with each step before we dive into the software. Be aware that the interface and features will differ slightly between versions. I'm using the subscription version sold on the Steam store, which lacks certain features. Finally, my narration will not follow the on-screen notes exactly. Let's begin. For this tutorial project, I shot 184 images in 14-bit RAW, shooting at 25 megapixel in aperture priority. This meant that my depth of field was fixed while my camera took care of shutter speed. ISO was fixed to a range between 100 and 200 for this tutorial shoot, and you want it as low as possible to reduce image noise. I also stabilized the camera on a tripod. I used my trusty Mi Photo, which I own three different models of. I shot at f22 and above for sharpness from foreground to background with minimal blur. I used a flat picture profile, which your camera may or may not have. A flat profile creates low contrast, high dynamic range images. According to Nikon, artificial manipulation of color and brightness are minimized. Subject information is retained as much as possible and faithfully reproduced. Large sheets of white paper bought at an art store used as background, with A4 sheets under the object. The captured raw images were converted to 8-bit TIFF for export. You can export 16-bit TIFF, however, RC will convert them to 8-bit before processing, which can take some time. RC can use 16-bit TIFF for texturing, however, we will color the point cloud and do not need to texture this model. Plan your image sequencing before you start, maintaining good overlap from image to image. While this project can be shot in fewer images, you would always rather have more images than too few. RC is faster than any other software I tried, often significantly, and takes extra images in its stride. Image 1 on the right shows a clay statue the size of my hand, which we will scan. Rendering the hollow underside correctly is what proved challenging. While the render was detailed and accurate, the underside was not reproduced correctly, as you can see. The fourth image shows what I was aiming at. Initially, I stood the statue upright on the Lazy Susan, pictured at number 5, and rotated it 360 degrees while taking images. I then lay it down to capture the underside. This approach failed. I ended up getting two overlapping models, one standing up, the other lying down. There was insufficient correlation between photos I was taking. I managed to solve the challenge through a better photographic approach. I learned to put the statue down on its back, shoot the images, and repeat after flipping it over. Let's have a closer look at what worked here. We're going to see a 30 second, 6 FPS animation, after which I'll talk you through it. I shot at low level, rotating the subject, then came higher angle shots. Flip it over and repeat. Then I got close to capture detailed shots of the face and the holes, beginning with the full image, stepping in with 80% image overlap at each step. The final images are of an area at the bottom rear edge of the base that needed additional data to prevent unwanted artifacts in the final render. I'm using Cyberlink's excellent photo director for my batch editing, a product I've been using since version 6. Some basic editing can improve image alignment and detail reproduction. Those changes to a reference image will then be applied to the other possibly hundreds of images in your project. However, good photographs will minimize your post-processing and improve your scan. Avoid high contrast in your images. Try to even out the shadowy and bright areas. Keep the lighting as consistent as you can. Shooting in overcast conditions or in shade can be an ideal approach. If you maintain the high amount of image overlap, I would say 60% or more, you will help the software more quickly stitch together the 3D image by recognizing the common areas called tie points from one camera point of view to the next. Adjusting contrast can raise detail in the image and make the tie points more visible to the software. 
The basic elements I apply to the images are contrast and exposure and white balance if required. Typically I brighten exposure by one stop and increase contrast by 40 to 50% or more as required. My only white balance selections so far have been either as shot or auto. The additional adjustments under the tone menu on the right are only applied if necessary. While I also use Skylum's Luminar 3 for image editing, I found PhotoDirector to be faster and easier for this task. I just want to show the similarities and differences that may exist in other editors. However, it should be easy to figure out what you need to do. Again, we have white balance selection. Note, white balance can be adjusted after the shot if you shoot in RAW. On the right, we see exposure, contrast, and other tone adjustment sliders, though they are named a little differently. Here I have two folders, one with the RAW files and the other TIFFs. You can see some of the capture information provided by the EXIF data. Each RAW image is 23 megabytes in size. This is the exported image sequence. These 8-bit TIFFs will be imported into RCS processing inputs. Each TIFF image is 91 megabytes in size. These TIFFs at 16-bit are 183 megabytes per image. If you don't already have one, there are a number of image editing packages on the market and GIMP is completely free. A quick word about obtaining RC before we go on. Capturing Reality has released a new PPI version of RC, which is licensed on a paper input model. For a cost of 20 euro, you can buy credits, which are required to export your models after processing. Except for that limitation, the PPI version is fully featured. Have a look through their website for more information. One alternative is to buy your RC license on Steam, which I did. As a South African, I'm using the South African Steam store, so the totals are in rands, with approximate US dollar equivalents displayed for reference. Notice the layout tabs on the top left of the RC interface. The interface is using the 1 plus 1 plus 1 layout indicated here. You can add project images into the section marked 1Ds by dragging and dropping, or use the folder button. RC accepts laser scans as inputs too, as you can see in the dialog box. 1 plus 1 plus 1 refers to the inputs, 3D, and help windows. The help section is fairly comprehensive and also context sensitive. It adjusts to show relevant content as you work. In the help is a step-by-step -step guide for beginners that works very well. I recommend you play with the layout options and see what they do. The different configurations are helpful for different tasks. This is the interface after inputs have been added to the project. Note that you can resize windows whenever you want by dragging on their borders. You may need to click the plus next to the image label to view your inputs. These images were shot at 57 mm as shown on the right of the file names. I find this lens particularly ideal as it has close focus, can go wide, and also zoom when necessary, and it's sharp and bright. It's Nikon 16 to 80 mm and has effectively replaced all my other lenses. Clicking on the 1Ds label opens up a menu where we can switch to the 2Ds view to see the image inputs. If you want to save or open projects, click the logo button at the top left. You can also quit RC from here by clicking Exit. The first step after adding your inputs is Alignment. There are two places you can begin alignment from. You can go to the Workflow tab, Process, and click Align Images. Or you can go to the Alignment tab, Registration, and select the Play button marked Align Images. After we begin alignment, we will see the following take place, although this is condensed to just a few seconds. This process of alignment can take several minutes or even hours, though RC is the fastest by far of any of the photogrammetry packages I've worked with, as I mentioned. Once the alignment process is completed, we will have a sparse point cloud of the object ready for reconstruction. Let us open the software now and go through these steps so you can see them applied in practice and I can show you 
a few extra details.